Every mom seems to have a signature dish that's absolutely unbeatable. But how many of us find our father's cooking inspirational? Sylvester Nair is someone who has, which makes sense when you discover that he's the son of internationally acclaimed chef Luke Nair. Like father, like son. And Sylvester is Mela's guest chef this week. Sylvester had invited me to join him at the office, which in his case is a distinctive Josie high-rise property. One of my guilty pleasures in life is food, especially great food. So when the opportunity came to speak to one of South Africa's youngest leading chefs, obviously I had to take it. Although only in his mid-twenties, Sylvester is the executive chef of a prestigious restaurant and he's taken an uncharacteristic morning break to spend some time with us and share some of his secrets. Sylvester, Hi, how's how it going? Good you. This is a very chilled out morning for a chef. So is this how every day starts? I would love to start every morning like this. Generally, my morning starts at 4 a.m. Mm -hmm. At work by half past five, six o'clock to start my morning shift. I just get everybody ready. I have to check everything for breakfast, taste the pancakes, obviously, <laughs> if it still tastes the same. I basically have to eat breakfast at like a hard life, eh? Six thirty in the morning. It's rough, because <laughs> eh? by by ten thirty I have to start tasting lunch. So it's more of a stressful and really an environment full of pressure. The pressure is on all day, every day. In the years that I've been in the industry, the pressure has become a lifestyle. Yeah. So you must have a love for what you do. Where did the love stem from? Growing up, it was like a normal thing for me to be around food, good food all the time, nice delicacies, and also being Indian. Our families are always around food, whether it's a little function, whether it's a sad get together or a happy get together, we still, everything moves around food. I think my first experience in the kitchen, I was about seven years old and I took my shot at scrambled eggs, but I also loved sugar. So <laughs> I used to throw in, it was almost like a deconstructed creme brulee, my first <laughs> attempt at, at scrambled eggs. From there, I think my dad obviously knew that, hey, look, this, this little guy wants to be in the kitchen one day and he definitely wants to be a chef. So I think knowing how difficult the environment is and how less you get to see your family, my dad started taking me to work at the age of nine years old. What kind of chef are you in the kitchen? I'm a good guy in the <laughs> kitchen. I believe that everyone should be happy all the time, no matter what your circumstances. If you're happy all the time, or you try to be happy all the time, your circumstances, if it's bad, it lightens up immediately. Well, you know what? I'd love to see you in your, let's call it, habitat. So, shall we go down to the kitchen? Yes, sure, let's do it. Cool. All right, so this looks very exciting. What are we cooking today? So I'm doing my take on a traditional Indian dish, which is butter chicken. I'm not going to use any butter in it, so it's going to be kind of a, a rich as in flavor and rich as in expensive dish <laughs> as well. We have some beautiful ingredients. I'm using some dried bananas, desiccated almonds. I'm using some white truffle oil. I'm using some nice Persian blue salt, which has a cooling effect on it. So it has little beads which are like ice inside. That's very it's cool. It's really cool. As opposed to just doing coriander, we're doing some nasturtiums, we're doing some edible pansies, we're doing coriander as well. And I'm using, uh, I'm not using normal coconut cream, I'm doing a clotted coconut cream. What is the difference? So I've clotted it with a little bit of vinegar just to add a bit of a tang. And then what are these? Here we have some mango pearls. We make it with uh, agar agar and we use a little bit of sodium alginate and then they sphere on the outside and they remain soft on the inside. I'm just gonna top the curry off with that. Okay, now I'm salivating, so shall we start? Cool, let's do this. I'm not chopping onions, I repeat. Um, okay, let's, <laughs> let's, let's just use the onions whole. Okay, we're not gonna do that. So I'm just gonna throw in the dry spices okay. just to sweat off and get the natural oils off it. As I said, I'm not gonna do uh, butter, I'm gonna use truffle oil, it's gonna add more okay. texture to the dish. Yeah, just a touch of that. So the onions, just till it's nice and soft in the pan. I'm just gonna put a touch of coriander in this as well. Danya. Yeah, when I was in Durban, a lot of my students asked me, being Indian, when they saw my rocket shoots, be like, ah, my mom uses murti herbs at home. Is it the same thing? And I was like, no, this is definitely far from murti herbs. It has more of a pungent texture. Yeah. And as I said, we're not only gonna use 
coriander. I'm going to put some nasturtiums in as well. You can see I'm not adding any chili to this dish. That's because the nasturtium is going to give it a nice kick, as well as the nice, lovely, mixed mother-in-law masala that I have. Okay, so I'm going to throw in the chicken now. There's so many different variations that you could do with a butter chicken. You could actually just do a whole chicken breast with a bone on it, and that's called a chicken supreme. Then do your butter chicken sauce separately, slice them down into medallions, place them on the plate, and instead of doing rice or papadums or roti or naan bread, do a saffron and uh, cumin mash and just spread it across the plate with a little bit of coconut on it, and then you're done. Fine dining Indian food. Wow, it looks good. It smells even better. This specific butter chicken that I'm cooking is definitely life-changing, so you can give it a shot and uh, cook it for your mother-in-law. Deal, challenge accepted. So I'm gonna add in a little bit of the okay. spice. How much are we adding? Uh, it all depends on your palate. How strong are you? Uh, As I said, this is mother-in-law masala, it's power. Medium strength? No, I don't think so. <laughs> Where, so I, you have roots in Durban as well, don't oh, you? Now it's my interview. Yes, a little bit. <laughs> I do have roots in Durban, yes. Can you tell me which area? Stanga. So you can't be a medium if you're from Stanga. <laughs> we'll go with a little teaspoon. A little I, teaspoon. I guess. So you can just smell the aromatics from that. Just getting a bit of the flavor out. Oh, it smells amazing. As soon as we get some smoke out of the pan, I'm going to put in a little bit of truffle oil. Mm -hmm. We're going to start from around the pot, not directly. Okay. Because the pot, obviously, being a wok, it heats from around the dish. With you. Okay, so I'm just going to chuck in a little bit. So that's a, a hint and a tip. Don't pour your oil directly in, go around the pan. So I'm just going to chuck in a little bit of almonds now. The almonds I'm, I'm going to add now and I'm going to add towards the end. Also natural oil from the almonds and it's going to add some texture to the dish. This is a homemade tomato sauce. I just puree instead of grating. We do, however, use jam tomatoes which is known in uh, Indian cuisine. It's soft, ripe tomatoes. That adds uh, good acidity to the dish, and you can see that the pot is kind of cleaning up at the oh. bottom, so all those good flavors are I'm coming out. I remember that trick. So at this stage, you're just gonna put it at a low heat for it to simmer, so the spices and that tomato flavor can actually cook out a little bit. While that's happening, I'm just gonna put a touch of the clotted coconut milk that we have. Coconut milk is really good, it's healthy, it's good for your kidneys. Good for bad breath if people have bad breath as well. I'm gonna do some more fresh coriander. You can never add enough coriander. The flavor is just mind blowing. Cooked, raw, or frozen. Oh, it smells so good. So the dish is nearly done now. I'm just gonna add some of the dried bananas into it and then we're gonna start plating it up. All right, so plates. I'm just gonna put a touch of this in my palm. Maybe you're gonna step back so this doesn't get into your eyes. As you can see, it's definitely a butter chicken curry that you weren't expecting. Yes. Where's so, the starch? Uh, the starch is in the bananas, eh? The bananas, oh. the nuts, and also the mango is gonna give it a bit of a nice starch mm -hmm. as well. That's in the in the salsa. There's no need to eat rice. I mean, why do you want to eat rice? You want to kill the flavor of a really good butter chicken. <laughs> All right, can I dig in? Yeah, sure. Let's okay. go for it. You're just going to eat a piece of chicken. You need to like... I'm going to do everything. Yeah, you need to eat oh, everything at once. That's really good, by the way. Okay, son. Chicken, flour. But you have to get that mango salsa. Mmm. Wow. You can definitely taste the new mango and the salt. Just a little bit on the top. I put it in last because it's not a strong salt on its own, but as it reduces in the pot, it gets extremely strong. That's why I just put a touch of it last. And also your natural salt from your almonds, your yeah. coconut milk, your coriander, your coriander seeds as well. So. What's next for you? I definitely think that I want to do my own thing after this. I want to have a really cool restaurant, small restaurant, just a 40-seater. Definitely involve my dad in it to have all his backing and all his experience as well. And I just want to cook amazing, beautiful food all day, every day, for as long as I can. I'm going to eat this, like, I'm going to be by your restaurant every week. That's cool. And I'm going to take Thank you. This and Cheers. Bye. Bye. <laughs>